Hey, poker people, it's Sky Matsuhashi, and this is the Smart Poker Study Podcast. Make sure you do not miss last week's episode number 142, where I discussed my first WSOP cash in this year's Colossus. I also gained some important live MTT insights, which I shared with y'all. Hey, poker people, thanks for joining me for another episode. I really do appreciate you lending me your ears and your brain for just a few minutes today. And my goal, as always, is to make it worth your time and to give you some actionable items that you can take into your next study sessions and your next play sessions. Alrighty, let's hit it. Class three of the Poker Math Minimum Effective Dose. So today's topics are expected value, pot equity, and a system for approaching poker hands, and it's called the Red Eye System. Truth be told, this episode should have been Class 1 of the math series, because everything I've discussed so far in Classes 1 and 2, it all stems from today's concepts. So, like Stryker says, You are out of order. Order, order. But it's okay, you're still getting all the info that you need to make the best decisions with every hand dealt. It doesn't really matter that these three episodes kind of went out of order. Please visit the show notes page for everything I discussed today, along with screenshots and links at www.smartpokerstudy.com slash pod143. Alrighty, let's do this! Gambate! And now for our feature presentation... Let's kick this off with the red eye system. Now, this is something I learned from Mark Warner over there at ExceptionalPoker.com. Last month, Mark and I did the Poker Mathematics webinar, and man, that was a very good one. One of my favorite parts of the webinar was Mark's discussion of the red eye approach for thinking through a hand of poker. And red eye is an acronym, R-E-D-I. It's an acronym for read, evaluate, decide, and implement. So this is a systematic approach that you should take with you into every single hand of poker that you play, as well as every hand that you analyze after the fact. Using this approach helps you to make the most profitable decisions possible, and it keeps you focused on the most important aspects of the hand. So let's hit the four parts of the red eye system right here. So R was for read. Now, when you're reading the hand, you're gathering information about the game and your opponent. You're using all the notes that you have, stats if you're playing online, and you want to determine the villain's hand range based on their pre-flop plays and the various lines that they take through the hand. The E in red eye was for evaluate. Now, at this time, this is where you want to estimate the odds, your opponent's commitment to the pot, your own commitment to the pot, uh, stack to pot ratios, the equities of our hand versus the villain's range, uh, and of, of course, expected value. And that's what we'll be talking about in just a little bit. During the evaluate phase of the red eye system, that's when poker math comes into play. Outs and odds and all that stuff that I just mentioned. After evaluate, you're going to D decide. Now, this is where you're going to choose a line that maximizes your expected value, whatever that is. Three betting, maybe folding, calling, um, check raising, whatever it is. This is when you decide on the best possible play. And then, of course, to finish out red eye, R-E-D-I is for implement. Now, when it comes to implementing, that's when you're going to execute the line uh, that you choose, that you decided upon. But you're going to execute it in a manner that deceives and confuses the opponent. You know, if you three bet a hand and he knows that you're always three betting with only pocket aces or kings, then you should probably not three bet because it's not going to confuse your opponent at all. He knows what you have. But if your three bet could be seven, six suited, pocket aces, uh, king five suited. If it's a multiple or if it's multiple different hands, you are confusing him. He's not going to exactly know how to approach you. So that is the red eye system. Read, evaluate, decide, and implement. So like I said during that, we're going to get to expected value. Now that was part of the evaluate step in the red eye process. Now, um, I've talked about expected value here and there on the podcast before, but I don't think I really ever went into good detail on it. So what is expected value? It's the most important mathematical concept within poker. Every decision that we make, it falls along a profitability line or profitability scale you can think of it as too. If a play is positive EV, then we can expect to make money with this play in the long run. And that's regardless of the actual results that we experience from just one instance of the play. If it's a negative EV play, 
then we can expect to lose money with the play in the long run. And if it's a neutral EV play or a zero EV, you might hear or see people say neutral EV means that we don't win or lose any money with this play. So there's something that I call having an EV mindset. Now, this is the first step to acting with purpose with every single hand that you're dealt. You're not just betting willy-nilly or just calling randomly. You must answer this question with every play that you consider. What is the EV of the play? What's the EV of calling? What's the EV of raising? What's the EV of three betting? Uh, if the answer is that it's negative EV, then don't make the play. If it's positive EV, then you must make the play. This is the first step in controlling your poker destiny. It's controlling your decisions and choosing to take the most positive EV lines. And we know within poker that you can't control the cards and you can't control your opponents. The only things we can control are the decisions we make. As my friend Mark Warner says, winning poker is entirely about making positive EV decisions over and over and not worrying about individual results. And during that mathematics webinar last month, Mark had uh, three key points that he discussed were the secret to winning poker. Key point number one is if you make positive decisions, you win regardless of the actual results of a hand. For a quick example, the other day I flopped a set of deuces versus an ace-king on a deuce-three jack rainbow board. And the only way I could lose is if the turn in the river came runner-runner to give my opponent an ace-high straight or the wheel. He donk led into me, and I made a tiny raise hoping for a call with maybe an overpair or two overcards. Well, my opponent did one better by shoving an additional 40 big blinds on the flop. He just basically made a bluff shove. Of course, I called with the near nuts. The opponent was only about 3% to win, so I got it in with the best hand. It ended up going runner-runner, and of course I got beat by a wheel, but that's okay. I got it in as a 97% favorite. If I could do that 10,000 more times in my poker career, I will be swimming in an astronomical win rate. The second key point that Mark made was bad beats are good things. By definition, you've made a positive EV decision, and your opponent didn't. Welcome this and embrace it. So like that prior hand I just mentioned, my opponent got it in with just two overs and two backdoor straight draws versus my set. It was a bad move by him, which worked out, uh, you know, unfortunately for me. But that's just this one time. My play was super positive EV and theirs was totally negative EV. And key point number three here that Mark talked about, the key to winning at poker is entirely about making and executing positive EV decisions, period. And like I said already, give me this opportunity of my set versus two over cards. Give it to me a thousand times and you'll see me at the nosebleeds in no time, baby. Alrighty, so there's an actual formula that we can use to calculate the EV of a given situation. And I'll tell you what it is right here. But if you really want to see this formula and see it in action, because me speaking through the maths can be a little difficult, but the show notes has all of this here. You can print it up. It's like taking notes on your own for, for listening to the podcast. But go to the show notes page once again, www.smartpokerstudy.com slash pod143. So the EV formula is the percentage of the time that you're going to win times the amount that you're going to win. You take that minus the percentage of the time that you're going to lose the hand um, times the amount of money you'll lose. So we can illustrate this with a very common situation. Let's say it's a cash game and we're in the small blind with seven deuce offsuit. It's one of the worst hands in poker, of course. Our opponent opens to three big blinds from the cutoff. We're considering a three bet to nine big blinds with our crappy seven deuce off. We have a lot of history with our opponent, and we believe that they will fold to our three bet 80% of the time. Now, seven deuce offsuit is just about as bad a bluffing hand as you can have. So we will assume, just to keep the math simple, we'll assume that if we get called, we're going to lose the hand. So let's fill out our formula, our EV formula, with the relevant numbers. So the percentage of the time that we win is 80%. Now, remember, this is simply how often they're folding to our 3-bit. The amount that we're trying to win is 4.5 big blinds, and that's the cutoff's open bet, or open raise, plus the two blinds. Now, the percentage of the time that we lose is the 20% that he is not folding to our 3-bit. And the amount of money we stand to lose is 8.5 big blinds. And remember, we're in the small blind, and we're making it a total of 9 big blinds to go. 
So if we plug all of these numbers into our formula, it looks like this. The EV equals 0 0.80 times 4.5 big blinds minus 0 0.20 times 8.5 big blinds. So remember, that's the total amount we're going to win minus the total amount we're going to lose right there. And if we run this math, EV is very simply positive 1.9 big blinds. And that's great. So our three bet bluff here wins almost two big blinds on average. We should make this play at every opportunity until our opponent wises up and starts folding less often. And you can run every poker decision through the lens of EV. And if it's a mathematically positive EV play, then it needs to be made. And you might be saying right now, hey, two big blinds is great. But what if it's close to neutral EV, like only 0.25 big blinds? Yeah, and that's a great question. Thank you very much for asking. So it doesn't sound like much, but even small wins like that add up over time. Let's say that there's a play that you can make over and over again, like a preflop steal from the cutoff. Depending on your opponents in the blinds and the button, this play on average makes you 0.25 big blinds. We're just going to say that. Let's just assume that for this example. If you make it only once, who knows what could happen? You could win 1.5 big blinds, or the flop can come in such a way that you lose your entire 100 big blind stack. But knowing that in the long run, this play is 0.25 big blinds positive, if you can make it a thousand times in your poker life, it's worth 250 big blinds. That's great. What if you can make it 10,000 times? It's worth 2,500 big blinds. And let's say it's so common that you can make it 100,000 times in your lifetime as a poker player. For example, you know, making that cutoff open steal. If that's the case, you can make it 100,000 times. It's worth a whopping 25,000 big blinds. And at 100 NL, that's $25,000. So a tiny positive EV decision doesn't seem like much one at a time, but if you find these opportunities and make these positive EV plays over and over in your poker career, you stand to make boo bucks, baby. Alrighty, I know a lot of you have purchased it, but I'm sure many of you haven't yet. My book, How to Study Poker, Volume 1, is in every format on Amazon.com. You can get it in ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Please leave an honest review and send your review to me. I'd love to read it on air and give you a little shout out by name for supporting the show. Your reviews help spread the word, and let me actually read you one right now. So this one came in uh, from D. McKay, and it's uh, titled, Great Book to Pick Up. Strong Poker Study Skills, five stars. Now, D. McKay says, Great book, which dovetails, dovetails nicely into Sky's other content. Absolutely perfect for anyone in the earlier stages of their poker career who has realized the amount of work that's going to be required to get anywhere. The study and analysis skills learned here will help even more as you grow as a poker player. Check out the podcast, too. That is so awesome. Thank you very much, D. McKay. I really appreciate that review. And I've got a couple of quick shout outs right now. First off, Zelko Arno decided to support me on Patreon at five bucks a month. Thank you so much, Zelko. I really appreciate it. It's poker people like you that really do keep me going. I totally appreciate it, Zelko. You the man. And of course, I want to also thank uh, somebody else named Mark Najem or Najim, maybe. Uh, he recently decided to sign up for ACR, America's Card Room, under my account right here. And I don't know what you play, Mark, but thank you very much for signing up. But in case you feel like it, this weekend is the Punta Cana Poker Classic Satellite uh, this Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. It's only $50, and it's uh, they guarantee five Punta Cana Classic poker classic um, satellite entry or tournament entries right there where they fly you out there. They give you money for food. You get into the tournament and all that stuff. I am definitely playing this Sunday. So if anybody wants to come rail me, um, I'll be playing this Sunday. My screen name is Frisky Misky on the Punta Cana poker classic. And let me know um, if you're playing and then we can rail each other. <laughs> Sounds pretty stupid. We can rail each other. Sounds like, uh, well, whatever. Um, we will watch each other play. Let's just say that. So, um, uh, yeah, Punta Cana Poker Classic Satellite this Sunday for 50 bucks on America's Card Room. And if you want to sign up like Mark Najim did, um, www.smartpokerstudy.com slash ACR, and you can get 27% rake back by signing up under me. Just use promo code SPSPOD when you go through that link. Alrighty, back to class, poker people.
Okay, so that was some great stuff regarding expected value, and I want you all to develop a positive EV mindset with every decision you face at the poker tables. Now, let's dive into something related to EV, and that's pot equity. So, Pot equity is how often you can expect to win the pot at any one moment in time. And technically, you can think of it as our share of the pot. It's like pocket aces versus pocket kings preflop. Aces is an 82% favorite versus the kings. This means that 82% of the time, the pocket aces will win without taking into account any board cards. But speaking of board cards, we all know that this can change, that these percentages can change on the turn of a card. For example, on a flop of king nine deuce, that 82% equity that the pocket aces was fondling pre-flop, it suddenly drops to only 9% when the pocket kings hits their set on that king nine deuce flop. So I said that pot equity is related to EV. We can take our EV formula that we already discussed and make a slight change to it. So now the percentage of the time we win can be expressed as our pot equity. And the percentage of the time that we lose is 100% minus our pot equity. So our new formula, once again, you can go to the show notes to see it. It looks like this. EV equals the pot equity times the amount of money we can win minus 100% minus our pot equity times the amount of money we can lose. So let's go ahead, do another example. We'll fill out this formula with my set of deuces example from earlier. Remember, we had pocket deuces on the deuce three jack rainbow board, and our opponent had only ace king for two overs and two backdoor straight draws. So on the flop and using flopzilla, and this is how I normally find my uh, pot equity at any given time, flopzilla or equilab, our pot equity was a whopping 96.8%. The amount we were gunning for by calling the shove was $16.97 in the pot. The percentage of the time that we lose was a measly 3.2% of the time. And that's just 100% minus our 96.8% pot equity. And the amount of money that we would lose by calling their shove over us was $8.74. So plugging these numbers into our formula, it looks like this. EV equals 0.968 times $16.97 minus 0.032 times $8.74. So if we run that math, EV equals a positive $16.15. And if we look at this in terms of big blinds, our our raise over their flop donk bet and then calling their three bet shove, it's a 64, a positive 64 big blind EV play. So that's how you look at EV as a function of pot equity. Challenge! Let me tell you something. If you listen to this episode or any other poker content and don't put something from it to use in your next poker play or study session, you are completely wasting your time. So, having said that, here's my challenge to you for this episode. Get into a positive EV mindset. Think about each decision before you make it. Checking your betting, folding, calling, or raising, and the bet sizing you use. Your goal is to choose the play that is most positive EV. Consider the ranges involved, your specific cards, board interaction, player types, and your own image before you choose your most positive EV course of action. Now it's your turn to take action and scooby dooby do something positive for your poker game. Now get it on. Of course, this episode isn't complete until you head to the show notes page at www.smartpokerstudy.com slash pod 143. Go there for screenshots to see these formulas, to see the um, examples in action. All that jazz is right there in the show notes. Notably urgent things to study. So to continue your studies into positive EV decision making, I've got something that you must check out. It's a free course from Dr. Trisha Cardner called Get Your Mind Right, the WSOP edition. You can find it at www.peakpokermindset.com. Now, this course, it includes a mindset toolkit, which has a free workbook, two MP3s, and a list of suggested apps, tips, and resources to help you build a peak poker performance mindset. If you are performing at your peak, you're probably going to be making a lot of positive EV decisions. So this course will be super beneficial to everybody out there. And 
just in general, I highly recommend everything that Dr. Carner puts out. Um, you know, her books, podcasts, her courses, and seeing as how this course is free, you ain't got nothing to lose. So go check it out like meow. That's a lot of nuts! Thank you so much for listening today. If you can type the words Smart Poker Study into a browser or into a search field, you can find me on Twitter, Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube. Or just send me an email, sky at smartpokerstudy.com. Alrighty, poker people. Next week in episode 144, I'll begin minimum effective dose number 8, which is all about post-flop plays. We already talked the C-bet, so now we'll get into the check raise, donk bets, floats, uh, calling or raising C-bets, and of course, slow playing. Word of mouth is the best advertising, so mucho gracio for sharing the show with other poker people. Your sharing and caring is what helps us grow. Until next time, study smart, play much, and make your next session the best one yet. I'm on-